I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Tests. And in this episode, we're going to talk about introducing reporters. Now, if you haven't already watched some of the earlier episodes, I suggest you take a look at them because this is going to have a, a bit of assumed knowledge about approvals and the basics of it. Uh, reporters are a really big and different part of approval tests. It's sort of core to the way that it works, and it's not used in any other sort of verification or testing framework. And so I'm not going to just talk about it in this one episode. I'm really going to give you four different episodes to sort of explore it in a lot more depth. But in this one, we're just going to start by introducing reporters. We're going to talk about where you can put the reporters, how you put them there, and what are the different reporters out of the box that you can use. Later on, we'll talk about the theory of the reporters, the inner workings of the reporters, and how you can customize and make your own reporters. But to get started today, I'm going to start in the same place we left off before where I had a passing test. And the first thing to notice is if I run this test, no reporters are going to be used at all. And that's because the test is passing. Reporters are only called when it fails. So to start with this, I'm going to have to make this test fail. And I'm going to do that by doing a misspelling of my name. So when it fails, you're going to be greeted by this sort of nice message. And we really have Christoph to think of this. I mentioned him in the X unit episode. So here it sort of says, welcome to approval tests, and you're not using this attribute. So I'm just gonna copy this directly from here, and I'm gonna go back to my tests, and I'm gonna add this at the class level. Add my imports, and now you'll notice that when I run this test, on failure, it's gonna launch tortoise diff. And you can see really clearly, hey, I both changed my name, which is changing the 10 character from a Y to an I, and from 121 to 105. I'm gonna close that without saving it so we can look at what this is like at different places. And the first is, I could have put this here at the class level, but I also could have moved this down to the method level. If I run this here, we'll experience the exact same thing Likewise, I also could have put this not on the test here at all, but in my assembly. So if we go properties, assembly info, here, I could have said assembly, and that needs to be a lowercase a, and then the exact same calls here. So if it's decorated at the assembly level, even though there's no decoration at all at the test level, we can run it and we will see the same result. Now, which one do you want to use? Approval tests uses the concept of least surprise. So if you have something decorated at the test method, it will use that. If it's at the class method, it will use that after. And finally, if it doesn't find anything, it will use what's at the assembly level. So usually I use the most generic thing at the assembly level and get more specific as you get closer to the methods. I'm gonna decorate here at the class level one more time. And now let's talk about all the different kinds of reporters that we have here. Well, the reporters are here and approval tests, reporters. And let's start with star report. So here you can see there's a whole bunch of reporters already out of the box sitting for you to use. You can make your own and we'll talk about that later. Or you can combine them to make your own. We'll talk about that as well. But not in this episode. And here we're just going to talk about what is already here. And I'm going to start with a different kind of diff reporter. So maybe you do not like using Tortoise. You would prefer to use WinMerge. So let's see what happens if I change my reporter here. And as you can see, it's now opened in WinMerge. The same information, different utility to show it. There's a lot of different reporters that you can use, a lot of different diff tools. But let's say you don't want to use a diff tool at all. You might want to use the file launcher reporter. This will only open one of the, one of the files, the file that you received. And it will open it in whatever program your system is configured for. 
So because this receive file is a .txt file, it's going to open it in Notepad++ on my system. What if you don't want it to be opened at all? Because this is an MS test, I might use the MS test reporter. When I use the MS test reporter, it will actually read the contents of the file and throw the exception as if it was an MS test assert equals. So here you can see it. Not as helpful in my mind, but is useful if you don't want to go outside of the normal system. What if you want the system to be used in different places in different ways. A really common way here is to use something called the quiet reporter. The quiet reporter will not launch anything and just says that something failed. Sort of like the MS test reporter but with less detail. Okay. But you usually don't want that in general, you just want it on say a build system. So for something like that I would be inclined to use something like the app config reporter. So we can do that and run it. And you can see that when this fails, it actually comes up and says, hey, I need you to configure which reporter to use. So I'm going to copy that, go to my app config, and insert it. And it's preset right now for the diff reporter. So now if I run this again, you will see that it opens in Tortoise again. But that allows me to make a different app config on my build system that will use a quiet reporter. Finally, if I get something like an image, so I would be using my file launcher reporter, I might also want to use something called a clipboard reporter. Now I'm going to use a feature and approval test that allows you to use multiple reporters. So following this, I'm just going to do another comma and a type of, and I'm going to add a clipboard reporter. And what this will do is it will use both of these and you can have as many as you want. So when I run this, first it's going to use the file launcher reporter which will show it up here which is great, but it will also use the clipboard reporter which is going to paste to my clipboard the command that's needed to take the receive file and move it over to the approve file. So I can click this and the next time I run it, it will pass. So that's just a taste of the many different reporters that are out there and how you might want to use them. We're going to go into this in a lot more detail in the upcoming episodes. But before I close, I want to highlight Lynn Lang. So Lynn is my co-founder at teachingkidsprogramming.org. And if you're interested in that, you can follow the link here to see other videos on our charity to teach kids how to program. She did a lot of work with me while we were creating the course we're there. And while we did all of that, it was all in WPF, so we were using approvals quite heavily to test the system out. It was because of that, and because she was in a role as an evangelist, that she decided to give a talk on approval test itself. And when she started to look at it from other people's perspectives, she realized that the reporters I had written really had only had the diff in the quiet reporter at that point. And so she worked with me to really sort of expand the reporters and make it so hopefully they will, you will find they are a lot more useful for you. As always, if you have any questions about approval tests, you can tweet it with the hashtag approval test. I monitor that frequently and will answer you promptly.